Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Apa khabar semua para penonton di Facebook Live dan juga di YouTube Live Radio Melayu Perth pada hari ini malam ini 18 Jun 2021. Uh, bersamaan dengan 7 Zulkaidah ya, 1442 Hijrah uh, Dan terima kasih kepada semua penonton uh, Yang sekarang ni tengah tune in ya uh, Di mana juga anda berada uh, Saya DJ Wan pada malam ini Ditemani oleh DJ Force Juga ber- berada di belakang tabir Kejap lagi dengarlah suara tu Dengarkan suara sekarang boleh? Silakan Ada kat belakang ni Assalamualaikum ah, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Memang tak nampak saya tapi tak ada masalah. Terima kasih kerana kembali bersama kami di Radio Melayu Perth pada malam ini, malam hari Jumaat ini yang Alhamdulillah 18 hari bulan 18 Jun bersamaan dengan 8 Zul Hijjah. Eh Zul Kaedah. Zul Kaedah Zul Hijjah. 8 lah. 7 lah. 8 lah. 8 lah Zul Kaedah. Ah, 14, 42 Hijrah. Okay. Alhamdulillah kita ada tetamu yang baik malam ni cerita pasal unta, unta or camel. What is that? In unta Kamal nanti kita cerita-cerita lagi sama-sama InsyaAllah saya akan berada di belakang tabir Dia punya menyebut sebentar lagi Okay, terima kasih DJ Wan, go Okay, baik uh, Tapi malam ini ya eh, kita akan menyentuh uh, mengenai uh, jejak pemandu unta Okay, golongan Muslim terawal di Australia ya Jadi kita nak kenali ya eh, Siapakah mereka ini uh, Dan uh, apakah jasa-jasa mereka uh, Mereka dipanggil Afghan Camelias Okay, uh, dan dibawa masuk ke Australia lebih 150 tahun yang lepas. Uh, jadi okay, kenapa mereka di, di bawah masuk uh, akan insyaAllah kita akan jumpa jawab ya. Uh, dan uh, uh, seperti yang ada yang ramai ramai yang tahu uh, benua Australia ni adalah benua yang cukup besar uh, dan dan uh, di, di, di uh, awal penubuhan uh, uh, kerajaan Australia ni jadi mereka ingin membangunkan negara uh, uh, negara ini uh, dan uh, haiwan yang paling sesuai untuk melakukan kerja-kerja tersebut adalah unta ya yeah? uh, tapi uh, di Australia ni tiada unta okey uh, unta ni bukan berasal dari Australia ada kanguru ada koala ada uh, tapi unta tak ada okey jadi perlu dibawa masuk dari timur tengah okey bila dah ada unta tu perlukan orang yang menjaganya dan mengendalikannya uh, jadi orang di sini pun tidak tahu cara mengendalikan unta uh, dan nak buat praktikal pun tak ada tak boleh ya yeah? sebab tak ada orang yang tahu jadi dia perlukan bawa masuk orang yang Tahu daripada Timur Tengah dan dari Timur Tengah sudah tentulah mereka ini uh, majoritinya orang Islam. Uh, jadi itulah terjadinya orang Islam terawal uh, atau komuniti Islam terawal di uh, Australia ini. Okey baik. Jadi uh, dengan ini uh, kita akan uh, berbincang lebih lanjut dengan uh, individu insan yang bernama uh, Tarik Chamki. Ya, uh, beliau ni uh, melakukan uh, sebuah filem dokumentari. Uh, yang berjudul uh, Good Day Camellias ya uh, menyentuh um, mengenai uh, masyarakat awal Islam ini yang dipanggil Afghan Camellias ni uh, dan lakukan dokumentari uh, dan kita lebih lanjut apa apa hasil kajian dan hasil um, filem ini ya yang 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 mungkin uh, ramai tidak tahu dan perlu diberitahu dan untuk sama-sama kita uh, pekalah Uh, apa yang berlaku mengenai uh, komuniti Islam di sini. Jadi, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Tariq Syamki. Assalamualaikum, brother. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, perkenalkan uh, Tariq uh, Syamki ya, di sini. Uh, seorang uh, penggiat filem dan juga pengarah. Ya, yeah? uh, Thank you for being with us tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for for the benefits of our audience, um, can can you briefly... Tell about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been here, and you know what sort of film that you normally do. Yeah, so uh, I was born uh, around 50 years ago in Tunisia, North Africa. Uh, sure. Yeah, I've been outside uh, my homeland for nearly 30 years now. Yeah. And I studied in Lebanon, then came to Australia back in 2003. Then uh, work, I worked in Lebanon as well as in Australia when I came came here as journalist. Uh, established uh, the Muslim community newspaper back in 2008 called Crescent Times, right. which ran for about three years. Then uh, I had to give it up and uh, back to university do some study. Uh, did master degree by, back in 2015. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then uh, in the meanwhile, I because of uh, journalism, basically 
doesn't work anymore, more or less, because people tend not to go to online and the news uh, online and social media. Yeah. And now I read newspapers anymore. I decided to make, make it, basically make uh, quite a remarkable U-turn in my life and uh, or uh, big decision in my life and uh, go to the filmmaking. So I've done lots of courses, but from 2015 till now, and uh, prepared my first uh, documentary, which is Gade Camilis. And uh, the story of this documentary is quite interesting. So I'm, uh, since I came to Australia, I, I noticed the identity crisis within the Muslim community. So uh, the, Muslim commu- the Muslim people, Muslim kids, in particular Muslim young- youngest, they have something to do, some problem issue with identity. So are they mm-hmm. Australian or Muslim or Malay or Arab or Turkish, whatever, that's quite a big issue. Yeah. And I noticed that since uh, early early years when I came here, that uh, Muslims, they tend to themselves to to call uh, each other the Malay, for example, or Iraqi or Lebanese or stuff. While they call the white man, they call it Aussie. So they don't consider themselves Aussie. They don't consider, consider themselves Australian. So I found out that's quite a big issue. And uh, there is nothing to stop us to consider ourselves Australian like anyone else, especially for our kids who are born here or anyone basically who got citizenship or got uh, a, a legal entity to be Australian citizen. So I started from there. Then uh, I was driving with my wife back in 2006 mm-hmm. from Brisbane. It was a long trip. She was pregnant eight months with uh, my first daughter, Sophia. So the trip was about 9,500 kilometers by car from Brisbane mm-hmm. to Perth, top north. And we went through Al Springs. And in Al Springs, we went to see the cemetery there, the Camille Cemetery. And that's how I started my interest about the Camille. So uh, it was quite a big eye-opener uh, to find that uh, Muslims, uh, we came here around 100 years ago and uh, buried there like neglected way and people, no one know about them or heard about them and even go and say Fatiha for their souls and stuff. Then uh, I said, yeah, that's interesting and start uh, doing research and stuff later on. But uh, most, the biggest shock in my life, when we drove through, uh, you know, we crossed the borders from uh, Northern Territory to Western Australia. Yes. The top Kanonara. <coughs> and when you cross, there is a little town called uh, Wyndham. Yeah. So Wyndham used to be Camille's base. You know, you sh- show me the map earlier. Yeah. So it was one of the Camille's base. They used to, uh, to, to deliver the Camille's, the mining sub- supply to uh, Hall Creek and uh, so crossing, uh, what you call, uh, the uh, mining town there in Kimberley to the port of uh, Wyndham. So we used to have port. And they uh, basically, they send the, the goods over, overseas by boat or whatever. So uh, in Wyndham, we not sign that says uh, Afghan cemetery. We went there and uh, we found this cemetery got around 15 graves and uh, has big, uh, of course, uh, it's quite maintained by the council there. And they try to make it touristic uh, monument or destination for people to come and have a look. Yes. But there is no marks on the graves, no names whatsoever. And the most, most uh, hurtful thing, they have big sign that the graves are very big because the camelies they've been uh, buried with their um, camels. Mm-hmm. So that's quite shock, and uh, I was co- quite upset about that. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, terrible, I found yeah. it quite uh, quite very sad that these people came and left their country because that's my own story. Yes. I left my country. I was forced to leave my country back in 1990. Uh, so uh, I said, yeah, they left their country. Then they went to strange land. And uh, they mistreated them. Then they buried here, and no one knows about them. No one remember them. No one come and even give names for their graves. So they were basically unknown soldiers. Then, so then I decided to do something about. It. Mm-hmm. Then later on, of course, there is other people. They did similar work about the Camilles and movies and stuff. So uh, in 2018, right. I managed to go across Australia. 2017, 18. Uh, in two trips with my kids, with my uh, sons. Yes. Uh, two trips. The first one to Kimberley and back, which is about 6,500 kilometers. And the second trip in January 2018 mm-hmm. was 11,500 kilometers mm-hmm. and uh, was uh, was basically across uh, three states, 
for me to add the light from the light to Marie uh, to uh, Farina Marie, then went up to Alice Springs up north, then come back to through Kimberley. So yeah, that's uh, that's what uh, we done so far. So all together, uh, your travel what eighteen thousand five hundred? Eighteen five hundred altogether over over two trips. Yeah, two trips, and we still we covered only about 70, 80 percent of the Kamelia stuff. We still some missing. So we right. still I didn't uh, do, for example, uh, Broken Hill in uh, New South Wales. I didn't go there yet, which still I'm planning to do. And uh, there is some places as well in uh, Queensland. I didn't do them yet. So right. basically we covered three states out of uh, five states. Three, three out of five, three, yeah? Three out of five states, yes, yeah, so far. Mate, uh, jadi uh, Brother uh, Tarik tadi, ya. Uh, Saudara Tarik tadi telah menerangkan bagaimana uh, beliau uh, mendapat inspirasi uh, membuat dokumentari uh, Good Days uh, Camellia ni, ya, berkenaan dengan Afghan Camellias ataupun uh, si... Uh, pemandu unta ataupun dipanggil pengendali unta ya uh, ada grup kumpulan yang awal datang ke Australia ni uh, dan uh, ini satu satu uh, pembuka mata lah ya uh, masyarakat, masyarakat Muslim yang lahir di sini uh, tidak ada jati diri ya uh, jadi kita nak tahu yang yang orang Islam komuniti Islam di sini juga uh, mempunyai peranan dalam pembangunan negara Australia ini baik uh, kita lihat uh, sebelum tu kita Dengar ataupun saya ingin mewawarkan pesanan penaja ya Pesanan penaja uh, secara ini tajir oleh Yaka Cloud Okey jadi Yaka Cloud ni adalah sebuah uh, ISP Internet Service Provider uh, Yang memberikan uh, perkhidmatan internet di rumah Ataupun di uh, uh, di bisnes lah ya Perniagaan-perniagaan ya eh. Contohnya di sini Radio Melayu Perth Studio Radio Melayu Perth ni Internetnya adalah hasil dari uh, sumbangan Yaka cloud. Okey. Uh, jadi uh, internet speednya adalah laju. Ya, yeah, adalah laju uh, dan um, maaf. Uh, Okey. Ada blok pula tadi ya. Yeah. Uh, internet speednya adalah begitu laju uh, dan kerana ia adalah MBN. Uh, jadi kepada anda yang berminat untuk um, ber- menukar ya yeah, uh, uh, penghematan internet di rumah, anda bolehlah menghubungi Yaka Cloud. Uh, dan uh, apa yang bezanya Yaka Cloud ni setiap bayaran bulanan anda 3% akan pergi ke organisasi an, uh, yang anda pilih lah organisasi uh, charity okey uh, yang anda pilih uh, dan uh, de- dalam uh, ialah kira di Melayu pun di bawah Mawa jadi jika anda mendaftar Yaka Cloud menggunakan kod uh, Mawa9072 uh, ni bila anda mendaftar secara online yaka.cloud uh, anda akan uh, sumbangan anda akan pergi ke Mawa Okay, jadi uh, ramai-ramailah sign up, okay, daftar untuk menukarkan uh, ISP anda kerana internetnya amatlah bagus. Terima kasih kepada uh, Yaka Cloud. Ya, yeah. Baik, kita teruskan uh, dengan uh, topik seterusnya. Uh, okay, Brother Tarik, okay, uh, I would like to show um, the map. Okay, uh, this, is, this is the map that uh, showing, uh, Austri- it's an Australian map. Let me just try to add this, okay. So this is an Australian map uh, from your documentary, yeah. right? So so basically you 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 start from Perth. Yeah. Let me just try to make it. Um, where is the, where is the so from Perth you 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 drove to uh, Kalgoorlie, right? Yeah. Kulgadi, yeah. this area, and then Northman, yeah. Northman, yeah. Right, then and then cross the borders with South Australia. Yeah. Cross the border to uh, South Australia to. Port Augusta. Yeah, Port Augusta. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there is quite, uh, there is even the uh, Camelis descending there, still in Port Augusta living there. Yes, all right. Yeah, okay. So it's quite, uh, yeah. Then uh, went uh, from, uh, went to Adelaide, to Adelaide Mosque. What is Adelaide? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, down there, yeah. yeah the green. Down. Okay, so Adelaide, follow, yeah. Follow yeah. the green green dots, yeah. Oh, follow the green dots, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so the green Adelaide. dots, that's major stops. Right. From Adelaide went up to Farina. Yes. Uh, north. Then yeah. to Marie. Marie, that's the first mosque there, uh, built by the Kamilis ever in Australia. Right. So that's still, uh, they have a replica, replica mm-hmm. of the mosque in uh, Marie. Yes. Uh, then for Marie, we crossed to Odnadatta track. Mm-hmm. We crossed through Odnadatta and there is a cemetery in Odnadatta as well, very neglected, which uh, till the point that we couldn't find it. So we couldn't find it because it's just basically it's not marked by any means. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. tried, we stopped there, we tried to find it and there is sign 
there is a kind of cemetery, but we couldn't find it. It's a few graves, uh, but uh, the communists as well leave it there, and uh, they had camp there. Okay, right, right, okay. And, uh, then, yeah, then we uh, followed on that. We went up uh, to Al Springs, basically. Yep. Uh, yeah. From Al Springs up north, across the uh, up north, we went here. Then we went Windham. to uh, Windham. Yep. And Windham back uh, to Broome. That's quite long drive. Yes. Through the Kimberley area. Yes. And Port Hedland, we found some uh, some Malay and some Muslim as well in the uh, Port Hedland Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then. Uh, back through Carnarvon and uh, Geraldton and stuff. And there is as well Camelies in Geraldton, uh, some graves there as well. Right. So basically everywhere around Australia. So which we didn't do yet is Broken Hill. Yes. And yep. uh, there Hill. is there is uh, something here in, in, in Queensland, some uh, little town, I think, Bedsville. It's not marked yet. There is some uh, Camelies uh, places as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we, we need to do them some stage as well. By by uh, by, and uh, yeah, that's that's about uh, yeah. So basically, they covered a huge area of Australia. Huge area, yeah. Huge Jadi, area. Kal 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 millions, kal millions of kilometers, square kilometers, yeah, yeah. With their camels, so it's not something easy. Just imagine when they do trip. For example, some of them they used to do trip from Adelaide to Perth, which is two thousand five hundred kilometers. Just imagine how many days will uh, spend on their camels to do that. Yes, so it's not something easy. To talk about months of. Uh, Riding camels and uh, yeah, so it's, they did a huge, uh, huge work. Yeah, I mean, for, from from the, this map itself, you can see yeah. uh, distance from Northman to Port Augusta, right? Okay, yeah. uh, Northman is here. Yeah. Okay, in Western Australia, Port Augusta is in South Australia. In South Australia okay, it was what? Uh, okay, sixteen, seventeen hundred kilometers. Yeah, right, three days by car, about twenty-eight days. Yeah, by camels. By camel. Days, yeah, that's estimate. Yeah. So it's really, really long journey, and, yeah, and given the, the the size of this continent, yeah, it's just yeah, astounding. They, they did an amazing job, and uh, if you know how they contributed to Australian economy, modern economy, just amazing, and no one, basically most people, they don't know that. So that's why we I get upset when people, they think themselves really, they are migrant and strange, because we've been here before even the Europe, European, and we, we can tell uh, talk about that later. So the Muslim, in uh, Muslim people, they came to Australia before the white uh, white European in, from 1600, before Captain Cook, before anyone. Yes. So and for the Camelies uh, in particular, so the, the they used to use their camels, and no one else can use the camel. The white population they w weren't able to use the camel or drive the camel because it's just it's not their business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Camelies used them if they weren't the Camelies there. Some expert they said uh, the modern Australia will be delayed. Uh, what we achieve now of best technology and uh, advanced uh, lifestyle will be maybe adjourned, uh, maybe delayed for uh, at least 50 years if the Camelies didn't help. Mm -hmm. So they did help with the mining interior and go to the very deep and uh, tough places and stuff for about 60 years. So they did help about 60 years before, of course, they discovered the tracks and their. Railway and uh, so on, so on. so yeah, so they did a huge contribution. Of course, that wasn't their intention. They came here, uh, sorry, they came here just to work uh, as camel drivers. That's right. Yeah. To practice. Yeah. But uh, they found themselves just inside the economy and doing a great job uh, against their will, maybe or, but they did it, and they were very patient and uh, they weren't very welcome. So that was lots of racism, lots of discrimination against them. They looked at them down. So it was a huge uh, uh, sacrifice for it. them, huge Service. struggle for them, but yes. they done it. They were uh, without uh, families, without kids, without wives, most of them. Then when they uh, they had to stay here because they didn't pay them money to go back to their homeland. They worked here 40 years, 60 years, some of them. Mm -hmm. Then some of them uh, simply they don't have no family, no kids. They had to live in the mosque, Perth Mosque. They lived in Perth Mosque, Adelaide Mosque, Al Springs Mosque, for example. Yeah. They used to live in the mosques the rest of their lives, and they were sick and uh, unable to do anything and neglected, and it was a really dreadful condition. And that's really, we need to focus on them as Muslim, and that's our heritage. And that's why when you talk about the presence of Muslim Australia, we, we say, yeah, we, we are pioneers. We've got pioneers uh, in this country just like the white people, like anyone else. Yes. And we did contribution, and we are deserved to be Australian just like anyone else. That's right. Like real yeah. Australian, real Aussie. Yeah, regardless, myself, for example, migrated here 
17 years ago, but as Islam, as Muslim community, we've been here for a long time. Yes. So that's that's the point we need to make here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Seperti kata uh, Brother Tariq tadi, ya. Yeah. Yeah, Australian, kalau tidak disebabkan oleh unta dan juga pengendali unta orang Islam ni, negara Australia ni akan ketinggalan 50 tahun. Ya, sebelum kedatangan uh, apa kereta api dan sebagainya ya, kerana mereka tidak dapat bangunkan negara ini uh, berusi hasil-hasil uh, mineral yang ada dan juga uh, peternakan aktiviti peternakan di di kawasan pedalaman Australia uh, jadi banyak jasa mereka dan um, uh, ialah sumbangan mereka ya, tapi mereka ni uh, kebanyakannya tidak dihargai dan banyak uh, mengalami diskriminasi Uh, oleh masyarakat uh, di Australia ni okay. jadi itu itu adalah intipati um, jelah uh, penerangan oleh uh, Tarik sementara tadi ok uh, kita nak tengok um, trailer ya uh, trailer um, dokumentari uh, Tarik ni ok but we're going to show you, uh, the the trailer of your dokumentari oh, okay. just to give uh, to, to for the, our audience to uh, to get an idea of what that Your film is all, all about. All right. Okay. Let me just uh, play it from here. You had this um, documentary shown in public yeah, yeah, a couple course. of years yeah, back. Did, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and But, what, uh, how was the reception? Currently, currently is in Amazon Prime. Yes. In USA and UK, not in Australia. So maybe we'll bring it to Australia yet. And uh, some other platform online. Like uh, there is uh, channels like uh, Netflix for Muslims in UK called uh, Il Shamia. They have it as well. So it's available online. For people as well as on Vimeo, so people can watch it. Yeah. 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 So, and, uh, uh, and if any, if any community members, uh, organization want to have a screening of this film, uh, of course, I'm happy to do that at any time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Kebanyakan ada yang berminat untuk uh, melihat online, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dokumentari ini anda boleh uh, ke Vimeo. Ya okay, Vimeo ada ada uh, anda lepak dapat lihat ada paparan ya vimeo.com uh, 2865 87104 ya uh, sedang tu uh, di Vimeo ni ada um, video streaming yang berbayar ya uh, jadi kosnya adalah lebih kurang 4 dolar 5 dolar lah ya uh, untuk lihat uh, untuk komentar di satu jam ini lebih kurang kalau di Malaysia RM15 lebih kurang uh, di Singapura mungkin dalam 5 dolar juga ya uh, jadi tak tak mahal pun uh, untuk anda tahu sejarah sedikit sebanyak mengenai Uh, orang Islam uh, awal di di Australia ini baik okay uh, we we'll, 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 kita akan tunjuk uh, ni sebentar lagi ya di di ruangan komen ya baik so uh, Brother Tariq okay so you, you have shared your 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 a little bit of journey your the the reason that yeah you want to do this um, documentary right 
Okay, what what challenges do you face? Um, I mean, you know, yeah, so get our funding or in terms of you know yeah, getting course. your kids to go on this this journey. Yeah. So, what sort of challenges? Yeah, lots lots of challenges. So, uh, the the movie when I started it started it basically from my own pocket. Then, uh, with some connection with some organization, I would mention uh, they supported us and sponsored like a Human Appeal Australia. Uh, Australian Federation of Islamic Council, Brother Ratab, uh, Sinead, of course, and uh, uh, even uh, Brother Abdurrahman from uh, Islamic Council of Western Australia, they all supported us yes. some stage later post-production. Yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to finish the film. But when I started doing the trip, it was basically self-funded. And uh, the challenge is, the biggest challenge is not... Uh, we didn't have four-wheel drive or because it was hot summer or whatever. The big challenge is that I restrict the trip to be camping style like camelies. So I didn't, even if I had money, I decided not to stay in the hotels or luxury and stuff. So I tried to do it. Yeah, well, we don't have camels. We have cars, but we need to do camping and sleep rough just like the camelies used to do to see how it looked like. Mm -hmm. And we managed to do that. So we slept most of the time and by the roadside. So without uh, proper camp camping ground, uh, very few times when you slept in camping ground and paid money. So just uh, by the side of the road, there is, you know, the overnight stay. So we st stayed like that and we lived mostly on basically basic food like noodle and stuff. So uh, unless when you got to the big city, of course, we treated ourselves some uh, good meals. Yeah. So uh, the, the kids actually struggled with me a little bit. And I was a bit rough, but I think that's to give them a lesson in the life that life is not for granted and uh, they have to toughen up a little bit. And and the Camelies, uh, that's what they did. They did 10 times tougher than that. So the Camelies used to travel in summer, winter, through all the weather element, and uh, they used to suffer. And of course, they done it in silence and no one knew about them. And they done that work and they done their work perfectly. And there is no single, I never, when I done my research, I never found single uh, reference tell the, about them that they didn't do their work properly. Everyone basically praises them. Yes. Even the racist people, uh, they may have been racist toward them, but most everyone said there is no one on time and did the, uh, their work uh, perfectly like the Kamalis. So they done what they work perfectly. They were uh, with what you call in Islam a manner. Yes. They had the manner that trust, trustworthy. Yeah. They kept, uh, they looked after the property of people when they transport them and so on and so on. So they were really legend. But they done it, of course, with uh, the power of Islamic ethics and Islamic uh, religion and the faith and demand and stuff, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So lots of, lots of, uh, we had, we have, we have been through lots of challenges. Uh, the most important of them, of course, summer. So the second trip, because of school holiday, summer school holiday happened here in Australia for summer. Yes. And I did, we decided to hit the road in summer, uh, 1st of January. We left 1st of January 2018. It was uh, so since day one, basically, went through Kalgoorlie, it was like 40. And when we, by the time we reached uh, Udna Data uh, to Marie and uh, Karina, was literally 47, 48. Oh, so that's it was right, yeah. quite boring. When you get out in the Farina Cemetery, we got out of the car, I remember it was middle of the day or early morning, like 11, 12. Uh, was literally, we couldn't stay outside the car more than five minutes, 10 minutes. Extremely hot, like oven. But we had to do, we had to get out and uh, pray Fatih for their souls and take some footage and stuff. Yeah, and so we done it. Then uh, luckily we went to Marie, we got to Marie, which is 50 kilometers ahead. Uh, we found hotel there, so we we uh, we we found hotel. We spent overnight there with some air conditioning. Otherwise, that two or three days they were very very tough. Yes. And uh, the nights after, during the night we couldn't sleep because of the heat. We slept the side of the road. The forty, the weather would during the night wouldn't jump down to the thirty five or thirty eight and extremely humid. Mm -hmm. So myself, I couldn't sleep whatsoever. So it's. We spent like a few nights we couldn't sleep whatsoever. So I wonder how the Camelies do uh, how, done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not something easy now. It's not easy, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let us see a little bit of uh, the snippets from yeah. from your uh, documentary. Okay, kita lihat uh, uh, sedotan ya, sedotan dari dokumentari 
uh, sedikit uh, pemandangan lah ada pemandangan ada sh- ada footage uh, dari uh, dokumentari beliau okey baik kita lihat Itu dia tadi ya, sikit petikan ya. Um, so sementara tadi kita telah tunjuk a map ya. Okay, peta uh, Australia ni di mana laluan uh, perjalanan Brother Tariq dan, dan, dan anak-anak beliau uh, dalam dalam proses penggambaran dokumentari ini. Okay, uh, you went to Adelaide right? And then there's a, there's a mosque. There's basically the oldest mosque standing in, uh, no? the, in currently in most, operation yeah, Australia. The oldest operating mosque in Australia. Adelaide Mosque, as far as I know, yeah. Right, so it's built by, by the Camellias, obviously, yes. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, Adelaide Mosque, I think uh, built, uh, they started building it in 1896 or 98. I think uh, they finished it a few years before Perth Mosque. Yes. So it's just a few years between uh, Adelaide Mosque and Perth Mosque. So Perth Mosque built in 1905, I think. Yeah. And uh, Adelaide Mosque, I think they finished it in 1800. 1898, I think, like yeah, seven years before. So around the same time, but the, the Perth Mosque at some stage, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, in 1940 or 1950, stopped operating, was completely neglected. I think, yes, because yeah. of conflict and uh, something happened. But for the Light Mosque, kept continue continue operation since. So it's the uh, longest, uh, oldest operating operating mosque. But as mosque, first mosque ever is, was built in Mari. Which is uh, 1888. 1888. Then uh, years okay. earlier, 10 years or 12 years earlier. Yeah. Then not the Light Mosque. Okay. Jadi masjid yang tertua uh, di uh, Australia ni adalah di Adelaide. Ya. Yeah. Jadi kita lihat uh, petikan daripada ada kementerian kuda Kamalias ni di mana. most oldest operating mosque in Australia. This mosque is located in Adelaide and cost 450 pounds to make. Was... Yeah, itu lah masjid uh, di di Adelaide ya. Yeah? There was uh, Adelaide Mosque. Yeah, so you did your uh, Friday Jumaah. Yeah, we did yes. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's a nice mosque as well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Must be, you know, but this is very similar, similar, but very very similar, similar to, to Perth Mosque. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, except uh, it has more uh, heritage of Kamilis, because the Kamilis, the, the latest legend ones, they lived in the mosque there and died there in 1950, 1960. I think last one died 63, 64 in the Light Mosque. So, so a few of them, they lived there at the age of 90, 100 years old or something like that. And they died in that mosque, so they kept uh, going and they planted, you know, uh, fruit trees like a uh, grape tree and fig tree and stuff. Yes, it was very interesting. And they, 
yeah so it's it's more uh, more powerful when it comes to the Kamilis because mm-hmm. the Kamilis they had a better much bigger community in South Australia than anywhere else in the country mm-hmm. so yeah so uh, they they used to have like some stage Marie in uh, 19, 1890 Marie used to to be just basically 90% Islamic uh, town just like uh, somewhere in Afghanistan or Pakistan right so okay. used to they speak uh, their language Pashtun or Urdu, whatever then and who used to have proper mosque and most of the bit occupied by Kamilis and some of Aborigin of course it was very very few white population then as well in Alice Springs which is Northern Territory yeah so uh, they started the town so the Kamilis they came to city center of Alice Springs now and they start their mosque one of them or two they start mosque and they start the garden like little farm yes and that's the start of Alice Springs before the white people came and be- built streets and houses and stuff. So they established actually a town called Alice Springs as well. Right. So yeah, because of uh, the uh, uh, Kamilis camp here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so they didn't uh, done a lot in Northern Territory, a little bit, but mostly South Australia. But it's mostly South Australia. Because the first, they landed, they landed in the Port Augusta as well. Oh yeah, because they landed yeah. there, yeah. yeah so landed yeah, there yeah, and uh, yeah. they used them a lot. And South Australia used to have uh, to be like independent state. Yes. Uh, like, you know, it used to be a colony, in the, like sort of independent and they got their own ideas about the business. And so they didn't have problem, much problem with race or using Kamilis like other states. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's helped help them. Yeah. Okay, so so that yeah. environment is more conducive, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you manage to get hold of any of their descendants? Yeah, well, I've been in touch with the descendant, and I tried to interview them in Adelaide and Marie, but they declined last minute. Okay. So they quite, uh, some of them, I think they got some uh, cultural shock, some of them, they get sick of talking to strangers about the Kamelis descending. Yes. Yeah, but I I have I've, uh, still have contact with several of them. Right. Yeah, descending and... Uh, Sadly, most of them lost their religion, which is quite uh, oh, so, sad yeah. uh, from an Islamic point of view. Yes. Uh, some of them, they still have a surname like Akbar, but they wear cross and stuff. So just imagine, uh, I know, I uh, think lady and uh, uh, boy, so, so compared to Christianity, and they wear cross and uh, their surname Akbar, which is uh, from Kamilis, one of the Kamilis uh, surname. So it's quite uh, sad and uh, it should be something that... Uh, we should do something about them but it's not something easy yeah yeah yes, yes, definitely not easy. easy yeah yeah okay okay yeah um <clears throat> that's, that's interesting yeah about about the alice springs yeah i've heard somewhere that the you know, alice alice spring basically is ali spring no, it's not <laughs> so that's that's no, probably it's, it's i don't about, know where yeah, this myth came from the wife of the white man one <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. the thing, but, but some of you say, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, spring, yeah. anyhow. Okay, um, yeah, that, we, we go back to, to uh, when, you, when you mentioned about Marie. Marie is a town, right? Okay, Marie adalah uh, sebuah pekan kecil di uh, South Australia. Yeah. Okay, di sebelah utara sikit, yeah, uh, dalam sikit. Um, seperti map yang kita tunjuk tadi. Dan di situlah tempatnya, masjid pertama di Australia. It was, it was the first mosque ever, yeah. right? Built yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1860. I think 60. Uh, no, 18, uh, 1888, I think, yeah. Not 6, 1888. 1888, okay. 1880 something, 88, I think, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show uh, a snippet from the, the documentary. Uh, masjid ni, masjid ni di, di, uh, di Pekan Meri, ya. Okay, kita lihat. Masjid ni um, dah, tak, tidak dia, dah, tidak beroperasi, dah, dah macam dah, dah, dah lusuh lah, tidak terjaga. Ya. Tapi ada lagi structure-nya, kita lihat. In 1883, they established a base at the new railhead at Herget Springs in South Australia, which was later renamed Murray. This base soon became the hub of Camel Cartage, servicing virtually the whole of Central Australia. We are currently in front of the oldest mosque in Australia that was built by the Afghan Cameliers in 
probably really hard for the Camelias when they had to pray at night and stuff because today it was like 45 degrees and now it's still like 40, 41 and at night w w it's probably going to be like 30 and imagine how hard it was for them when they had to come and pray every day. Baik, itu dia. Itu ada petikan daripada dari, uh, dokumentari. Eh. Pada anda yang berminat untuk menonton uh, dokumentari ini, anda boleh ke Vimeo. Eh. Jadi vimeo.com. Uh, jadi start 2865-87104. Uh, dan uh, kos untuk melihat. Eh, kira, kira sewa ya, rent. Rent for one week. Uh, Kosnya adalah lima dolar. Australian dolar. Tak dapat lihat uh, 57 minit um, dokumentari ini. Ya, berlangsung. Uh, jadi anda dapat lihat bagaimana pengalaman adik beradik. How uh, there are three three brothers or four brothers, right? Your your sons or your sons? Yeah, four of them. I have four four sons. Yeah. Four sons that that actually uh, went on this uh, expedition. They're, they're older now. Yeah, expedition. Yeah. Yeah. They're older now. Yeah. I don't think they will do it again. <laughs> How many days in total? Uh, Eighteen. Thirty-one days. Thirty-one days. Thirty-one days on the road. Yeah. Thirty-one days on the road. Yeah. Tengah mandu. Uh, 18,000 km dua kali lah dua, on, on, on two different trips uh, dan uh, 31 hari sebulan yeah? uh, most of the time probably got sick of, of driving already she's never been in the OG okay um, kita lihat ada ada komen daripada penonton uh, we, we got a few comments here but but uh, there's no uh, questions in particular Aimovic from Kuala Lumpur is watching and someone Saparuddin Sha'ari uh, tag someone so uh, yeah so far there's no uh, there's no question okay um, Alhamdulillah uh, very very, very um, useful and and you know it's good for us to know uh, you know you're, you're from from your point point of view based on you know your experience creating this this documentary about the story of Af Afghan camellias but some, some some of the our audience may want to know why they call Afghan are they are they come from Afghanistan or uh yeah where where they are from so, so uh yeah the, the the English people used to uh to have the stereotypes so everyone from the Indian subcontinent uh, they would call them either Indian or Afghan So uh, India subcontinent and they, they mixed up uh, basically together. Yes. So there is uh, quite several of them from Afghanistan, but uh, most of them actually they are not from Afghanistan. They are from India, India, which later part of it become Pakistan. Yes. And the part of it stayed, uh, of course, the rest stayed India. So uh, they were mostly Indian, and uh, there is some from uh, Kandahar and Kabul and South Afghan. Yes. And uh, there is even few from Turkey and. Uh, Uh, Egypt, even one or two from Egypt, and so on and so on. But yeah, but uh, they weren't more, most of them. They weren't Afghan, and uh, the expert now they know that they work that out. They know, and for me, when I did the documentary, I, I called them uh, the Muslim Kamilis. I refused to call them the Afghan Kamilis because they were Muslims. That's a common description of them. Yes, so it's more accurate to say the Muslim Kamilis. Yeah, they're the Muslim and, Kamilis. Uh, despite yeah. they were about three or four of them as well, or five. And they were uh, Hindu, so uh, Indian Hindu, not Muslims, but very, very few. So out of 3,000, I think uh, there was like four or five Hindu, the rest all of them Muslim, Sunnah and Shia, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we call them Muslim Kamilis. That's more, uh, I call them Australian Muslim Kamilis. Australian Muslim so that's, Kamilis, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a more, more accurate, more accurate term yeah. that, that, that yeah. should be used, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, uh, it's interesting that when you mentioned uh, just now about, about visiting Broome, Uh, where uh, in 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 scene, there's there's one scene uh, in your documentary where your your son was uh, standing next to a signboard saying Malay, right? Malay, so Malay, so where so where yeah where what was that? And, so yeah, what so story? Broom again. Uh, let's take you back to 2006 trip as well. Yes. When you got to Broom, we went to the cemeteries. Uh, the first time as well, I visit Broom then. Yeah. So we went to the cemetery to the Chinese cemetery. And uh, then uh, they were next to each other. Chinese cemetery, then Japanese cemetery. And they were absolutely beautiful. Very organized and fancy and lots of money and investment there. Yeah. Then we crossed the fence and we found this uh, sign Muslim cemetery or Malay cemetery. 
Malay Muslim Cemetery, these two sides, Malay Cemetery and Muslim Cemetery. Yeah. But they're all Muslim, of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I uh, found that and found it absolutely shambled, broken graves, uh, stuff. And my wife then, I remember, started crying, and I cried as well. Negligence of that graves and that people. And that's another chapter. We should uh, do something about them. And we decided uh, since to do something about, but it's not nothing done yet. So we need someone to go and fix the cemetery. And uh, particularly in Malay, I think uh, as Ma Malay population mm -hmm. or uh, people from Malaysia in particular, Indonesia to some extent, you should actually try to do something about the graves and look at them as your heritage as well, as uh, from particular, they came, most of them from that country. So the broken graves, uh, rubbish everywhere, uh, liters and uh, so on and so on. So it's really, really a shame for the Muslim community. So uh, these people there, they weren't, most of them, they weren't Kamilis. They were pearl divers, came from Malay. They, so they, the European, they used to come and uh, fish for pearl, of course. They uh, dive and, yes. and uh, they used the, uh, Malay because they had cheap labor. So they used them as cheap labor and uh, some of them, they had very horrible condition as well. So that's another chapter, that's another project. So our intention is to do documentary about them because they, yeah, there's records and stuff, they mistreated them, like basically like slaves. So they used Aborigines as well as Malay and they used to basically send them a cargo in the ship to uh, Broome or the coastline and stuff, make them work and give them the minimum wage and treat them like slaves. And they didn't have options. Of course, they had to go feed their families and stuff. And some of them died and so on and so on. And there's other population, the Chinese and Japanese, they came to Broome as well, did diving. Yeah. They were stronger because they were a bit, act like uh, uh, like basically family and stuff. They protected each other. But the Malay, they were really not protected at all. And that's, we talk about 18, 80, 18, 90. Yes. They started. Yeah. And uh, then they managed to make a uh, community, of course, and they managed to make mosque. I think in 1930, they made uh, the Muslim mosque, uh, basically mosque there, uh, which uh, next the airport currently, uh, Broome airport. And uh, then the Japanese, when they bombarded the Broome, basically they destroyed the mosque because they bombarded the airport, which was a military base then. Okay. And they uh, destroyed the mosque. And since... Uh, as far as I remember, Brother Abdurrahman from the Islamic Council, uh, he found notes that they contacted the Broom. I think it was 96, Broom Council, they contacted the Islamic Council of Western Australia. They told them, look, you've got land here, come and do something about them. And no one done anything about Then we tried last year to contact the Broomshire, we did. And uh, they replied to us, uh, yeah, actually we used it for drainage. The land, we, they used it drainage for the airport. Mm -hmm. So they take it over, they take it for good. Yeah. They seized oh. it. And uh, they said, if you find another place, we'll help you with regulation, blah, blah. So uh, what we need to do, we need as well to make pressure and get uh, alternative land. Ask the Broom Shire to give us different land and try to make Islamic center there in Broom. Oh, okay. To replace that and uh, commemorate the heritage of that uh, poor people who died and served, again, the Australian economy from their uh, professional jobs here. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Yeah. And as well, we need to do something about the cemetery. That's actually a matter of urgency. For Windham Cemetery, try to take off that bad sign about the camelies they buried with their camels. Yeah. Uh, and so I want to make like a plague and stuff and more information for the tourists and uh, be proud of us as pioneers. The camelies they were pioneers, not just uh, stinky camel drivers or whatever they think. Yes. And in Broome as well, we need to uh, actually, I wish one day the Malaysian government actually invest like the Japanese government, uh, they paid money, Chinese the government pay money. They paid millions of dollars to for infrastructure of the cemetery, yeah. to make it beautiful and presentable. And that's what the Malay government, Malaysian government should do. Mm -hmm. They should invest, at least give, even I think 50,000, 100,000 make a difference. We, they need to invest or uh, donate or actually send someone or what to do something about because most of them they were malay yeah and okay. it's quite yeah it's, it's part of our heritage mm -hmm. yeah yeah kepada uh, rakan-rakan kita yang berada di broom uh, masyarakat melayu di sana ya yeah. um, <coughs> kalau ada maklumat mengenai uh, apa tanah perkuburan di sana tidak terjaga uh, boleh hubungi hubungi kami insyaallah kita boleh boleh lakukan uh, liputan uh, tentang uh, isu yang telah di 
di inilah <coughs> dibawakan ataupun uh, telah dikatakan oleh uh, brother uh, Arik sebentar tadi. Hmm. Baik. <coughs> um, so in, in your in your uh, in the process of shooting, right? I mean your journey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there there's uh, some some incidents happening. I think I saw there's like the flooding, and that's one time your your got bark bark your your right. uh, your van yeah. got stuck. Okay. Uh, jadi dia punya van uh, sangkut di di uh, apa? Uh, di, di dalam apa mat mat apa lumpur eh uh, jadi kita lihat uh, sedikit ada sedikit ada sedikit. Seventh day of the trip, and we're stuck 17 kilometers away from the town Udnagata. Because of the, the all the mud there, it's not meant to be for two-wheel drive. It was successful when we went from Marie to Unadata, but from Unadata here on, um, we got stuck because of some rain and some mud. And now we're camping here in the car. If tomorrow the water and the mud doesn't go away we have to go back to Unadata to find and seek help so she had to like the trip so far yeah but sometimes it got hard and challenging we were exhausted that night without proper dinner it was really horrible yeah so you it have to stay the night as well you couldn't sleep that night in the car and it was just like 15 kilometers away from Unadata yeah it, uh, past Unadata towards the northern territory and uh, yeah, well, I don't think it was very safe, so it was quite risky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a remarkable night. Yeah. Was there any other cars uh, that that was? We by? just slept in the car. We couldn't do camping. We didn't. We couldn't cook. It was quite windy, very hot. We couldn't sleep overnight. We didn't cook anything, noodle or anything whatsoever. So just uh, the kids ate some uh, biscuit or whatever available, and we tried to sleep and spent till the morning. Then the morning, uh, the mud still there, of course, didn't go away. Then you had to go back to Nadata and. Yeah, take a different road. Okay. So we change the road to uh, towards Cuba uh, PD. Yeah. Wow. Different road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's Australia or back. Yeah, that's right. It's, <laughs> it's not very it's unpredictable. So it was like three days, 45, 46 degrees. Then suddenly the rain started falling in the summer. The heart of the summer started raining, falling. Then mud in the road. So it's completely unpredictable. So it you couldn't predict now. Yeah, yeah. And everyone told us when we left Marie. Yeah, and I will be fine. You are two-wheel drive. That's fine. You can just go. Don't worry about anything. I've got spare tires, of course. And so we thought, yeah, we, have, we will be fine. But it wasn't the case. Wasn't <laughs> the case. Yeah. Well, you always, uh, you know, um, you need to be prepared for the worst. And yeah. I mean, if you were to do yeah, that, that again, yeah. well, it was good. Yeah. It was good, yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Um, kepada anda sekali lagi ya, kepada anda yang berminat untuk melihat, menan, uh, untuk mengetahui lebih lanjut uh, mengenai Uh, apa golongan uh, Islam terawal yang terdiri daripada pengenali unta ni anda boleh melihat menonton di Vimeo ya uh, seperti kata uh, Brother Tarik tadi um, uh, apa dokumentari ini uh, di dipertontonkan oleh uh, Amazon Amazon Prime uh, in the U, in the US yeah, yeah, US and UK in the UK yeah. Yeah. Amazon Prime kalau anda di US atau di UK anda boleh dapat lihat uh, di Amazon Prime uh, tapi di Australia tak ada Amazon Prime di Malaysia tak pasti Amazon Prime di sana ada ke tak mungkin tak ada juga uh, tapi insyaallah uh, ada Netflix uh, you 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 you're saying that they they just say like Muslim Netflix is is yeah, being yeah. shown there yeah there there is another yeah called the Shamia they they have it shamia.com el kimia or shamia something like that yeah okay so they have it as well yeah yeah okay right right okay okay menarik menarik memang apa pengalaman yang menarik uh, di dapat lihat pemandangan uh, Australia itu sendiri dan juga uh, bagaimana uh, kubur tanah perkuburan orang Islam yang yang banyak kita lihat tidak terurus tidak terjaga uh, ditinggalkan 
uh, satu benda yang uh, kita uh, sedih lah okay. uh, kalau kita lihat bagaimana orang Australia ni uh, memberi perhargaan kepada askar-askar mereka uh, mereka yang telah banyak berjasa tapi orang Islam yang datang ke sini banyak juga berjasa banyak membantu untuk uh, membangunkan uh, benua ini ya yeah, alhamdulillah la la um okay <coughs> well, sorry well, so what's next uh, you know uh, i've heard that you you're also one of the you know you, you're the founder of multicultural film festival muslim yeah. multicultural yeah muslim film festival film first. festival right so okay we, can we you start yeah we started in 2019 uh, the muslim film festival Yes. So basically, we ask, we people submit their films from all over the world, uh, films about Muslims, films made by Muslims, and uh, this year will be the third year. So in uh, year number three. Yes. And then uh, this year as well, we're starting another festival called Multicultural Film Festival. So both of them this year we we have over 150 films from all over the world, including of course Malaysia and uh, Indonesia and Singapore. So we got uh, very, very good, and uh, surprisingly, uh, despite Corona and stuff, people still making films. So I'm not sure how they do that. So these films, uh, yeah, they're creative they people. Yeah, they're they find ways. Yeah, so they challenge everything they do. It, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we do, and we plan to do documentary to cover the rest of Muslim heritage in Australia. So Kamil is just part of it. So we need to do uh, something to cover the Makassan, the from Makassar. Uh, Mali, uh, Indonesian who came to top north and traded in the 1600 traded with the original uh, tribes yes and the top north uh, for sea cucumber so they came to get sea, sea cucumber and uh, they got they got cultivated it from the shores of Australian shores and return they they did some trade with the Aborigine brought the, to them some materials or whatever then uh, we need to do something about the broken graves I called it the broken graves in Broome about the Malay uh, pearl divers mm-hmm. and uh, we can as well and later on we can do things about the the contemporary the later on immigration and society and so lots of things to do about Muslim and yes. we need to focus all the time that we are just as Australian as anyone else no less no more yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. obviously uh, from what you're saying uh, you are into social issues uh, more historical yeah. stuff yeah, yeah not not into any fiction thing yeah. uh, we think about fiction <laughs> yeah if you got budget i got fiction about uh, based on the true story about the kamelis called uh, gul, gul muhammad uh, gul muhammad he used to be in kalgoorlie he met uh, uh, he used to work as kamelis he met a french woman Yes, the French woman used to work in Kaguli as ex- ex- escort. Mm-hmm. She was French, of course. Yeah. Then uh, they fell in love, and uh, then uh, s- uh, suddenly everyone surprised from the French woman entourage as well as the, from the Kamilis. They they decide to marry Islamic marriage. They uh, married in uh, Kulgardi. Okay. Kulgardi Mosque. There is Kaguli and Kulgardi. There were mosques there, and uh, then uh, she converted to Islam and. Uh, Uh, she lived with him across the country. They were uh, uh, traveling from place to place, and they had about four kids. And she died as Muslim. So it was a very interesting story. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So she was very well. She gave up everything. So she used to be, you know, the highest society, upper society in Kalgoorlie. Uh, they used to have lots of money, and she gave up everything just to live with these families. So I'm trying to make film about them. Uh, that would be mixed with some fiction. Yeah, it's based based on true based story. on true story. But we need some a few million dollars. Oh yeah, make it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need find yeah, a good so actor and actress. That's uh, right. You need things <laughs> properly. So that's on on the list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Yeah. Um, I think we almost done. Uh, it's already eight fifty nine. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, satu jam kita ber, uh, discuss uh, ataupun membincangkan mengenai topik. Uh, ada banyak lagi benda yang perlu dibincangkan ataupun uh, yalah uh, isu-isu mengenai masyarakat muslim di sini dan uh, golongan uh, pemandu unta ni. Uh, tapi inilah masa yang kita ada. Dan terima kasih kepada yang anda yang mendengar. Uh, thanks also to uh, brother uh, Rakib Ratip, sorry, Ratip and Tuan Haji, Tuan Haji Rahman uh, juga ada ada di di studio and of course to brother Tariq who's willing to share uh, your experience and your perspective yeah. on um, uh, yeah, the, work, the Muslim yeah. camellias uh, is, is indeed uh, really really uh, an eye opener for, for 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 us here and in the studio and also hopefully uh, to our audience who's uh, 
watching this live show and also our recorded show later on on Facebook or um, YouTube. Okay. Uh, kepada anda yang menonton, terima kasih uh, dan jangan lupa ya, uh, Yaka Cloud, Yaka Cloud, anda boleh uh, daftar uh, untuk uh, mendapatkan internet di rumah uh, jika anda ke apa ke website yaka.cloud. Okay. Uh, daftar dan letak uh, referral code MAWA 9092 maaf 9072 uh, insyaAllah ya uh, Yaka Cloud akan menyumbangkan 3% daripada bayaran bulan anda uh, ke MAWA okay, uh, jadi anda tak bayar lebih pun anda bayar bulanan anda pergi syarikat lain pun sama juga bayarannya tapi Yaka Cloud adalah hak milik orang Islam Uh, dan uh, sumbangan anda juga akan membantu komuniti uh, di sini insyaAllah uh, so uh, Brother Tariq do you have any uh, parting words before we close our show yeah well, uh, I think that's is about yeah, thank you for having me and uh, for focus on this particular topic and uh, hopefully we'll try to do something together in future for the sake of the community insyaAllah insyaAllah, inshallah. okay okay jazakumullah khairan Ya, yeah, so kalau terima kasih uh, Brother Tariq dan uh, InsyaAllah lah, uh, terima kasih kepada sekali lagi Dan uh, DJ Force juga berada di belakang tabir Dan uh, uh, yalah Godek-godek uh, bahagian teknikal tadi Dan jika ada uh, kekurangan Daripada pihak kami, uh, kami mohon maaf uh, Kita jumpa lagi insyaAllah minggu depan Dalam siri Sembang Down Under Setiap Jumaat jam 8 Kalau minta ni kita start Pukul 8, uh, kalau sama Mungkin lewat sikit uh, Sebab dah, dah malam lewat ya maghrib dan sebagainya uh, dan uh, dengan itu saya DJ Wan tapi bagi assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh that's it John. to our user